Joining us are two level-headed members of the West Virginia Legislature. That's why I called them here today. Senator Corey Palumbo, Democrat in our county. Corey, good morning. How are you, sir? Good morning, Hoppy. I'm doing well. Thank you. How good, are you? I'm well, thank you. Senator Ed Gaunch, Republican in county. Good morning, Ed. How are you, sir? Good morning, Hoppy. I'm great. Thank you. So just guys here, just level-headed guys sitting around talking here this morning. Things got a little, a little worked up yesterday, Corey? A little bit, yeah. I think people are, uh, are frustrated uh, with the whole process, with the budget, and I think that people that I talk to out on the streets are, you know, they want us to, to take care of this business. And, you know, when I heard some of the comments that uh, President Carmichael and uh, Speaker Armstead made a couple of days ago about the budget and saying that, you know, implying that all the Democrats have done in the past is just raise taxes and increase spending, it just uh, it rubbed me the wrong way. And I think those kind of comments with the finger pointing, the, the name calling, the bickering, people want that to stop. People want that to stop. They want us to get to work and they want us to fix this budget. Senator Gaunt, what do you say? Yeah, well, uh, uh, Senator Palumbo's right. He usually uh, is right. But uh, I would say uh, there is a great level of frustration. For me, this is my third time going through this. And it seems like it just doesn't stop. It's the same thing every year. Um, no name calling from me, no casting of aspersions, but uh, we need to fix this. And we need to make some structural changes that will fix it so that we don't have to come down here every year and try to backfill uh, places where the budget doesn't meet the revenue. Let me give you a perspective here and see if you agree or disagree. Is that the governor makes his budget proposal and there's reaction to it, for it or against it, whatever. Republicans say, give us a little time. We're going to come up with our own budget plan, which has not yet come out. We'll get to that in a minute, Senator Gaunch. And then the Moody's rating comes out and the governor uses that to uh, make his argument for his budget plan. And then leaders of the House and Senate respond and use that same Moody's information to push for what they want to do with the budget. So it just kind of raises the ante a little bit in this whole process. And, Corey, I think the next step, quite frankly, is uh, as the governor tries to sell his budget plan, he's going to be on talk line tomorrow for a whole hour talking with voters about it, is that, and I'll ask Gaunch about this in a minute, it's really up to the Republicans to make the next step. Oh, I don't process. think there's any question about that. I mean, the, the, the legislature needs to respond to that budget and come up with a plan. And I don't think, I mean, people are, you know, getting on them a little bit about where's your plan and widening out yet. I mean, it's not unusual to not have a budget plan in the first two weeks of the session. Uh, but, and I, I honestly believe they're, they're doing a lot of work on the budget. I don't know what it's going to ultimately look like. But, yes, the next step is in the majority's hands to make. What's going to be, they don't like the governor's plan. What is your plan? And I don't think it's I don't think it's unusual that it hadn't come out yet. Right. We're only in the in the second what's, week. Corey, what's unusual is this: is that because we have a budget crisis, that's what's unusual. So the budget is the big story. Lots of times in a legislative session, we're talking about everything else but the budget, and that gets done because there's not a crisis and it gets done the last couple of weeks. So the the environment well, is different, and, and that's true. And it should be different this year. Yes, it you're is right. a, yes. It is a crisis. This should be our top priority as we go into this session. And I totally disagree with Craig Blair that our bond rating got downgraded because of our governor's comments. I mean, it, we're getting downgraded because we don't have a structurally balanced budget. Over the last several years, under Democrat and Republican control, we have backfilled the budget, as Ed said, with, with one-time monies, raiding our rainy date fund, sweeping accounts. That's our problem. Our problem is not the governor's talking about raising taxes. Our problem is we're not structurally fixing our budget. Ed Gaunch, you're not chairman of finance. Mike Hall is. But how do you think, what do you think the Senate plans will, let, will look like? There'll be a Senate plan and a House plan, I'm sure. But to try to uh, structurally fix the budget. Any idea? Yeah, I can't speak for Mike Hall, but I can tell you uh, that, that it's, it's correct. The reason we're sitting here talking about it, the reason it is a crisis, is because we haven't really dealt with it structurally. We need to fix this thing. Um, I can't speak for, uh, for Mike Hall, but I can tell you this, I believe we'll have a budget. I believe we'll have a, a working document within 30 days of the beginning of the session. By the end, uh, uh, by the first couple of weeks of March, we'll have a document. Mm -hmm. um, do I think that the governor's plan is the right plan? No, I, I don't think we can just go out and raise $500 million for the citizens for, through more taxes. I think it takes more long-term structural thinking. My plan, and I'm only speaking for Ed Gonch, is that we fix our tax structure. We, we had these uh, the special select committee on um, tax reform. 
we heard over and over and over there are two impediments to West Virginia growing and one was the personal income tax second was the personal property tax I hope we deal with the personal income tax this year to either lower it and on the path to get rid of it and do that with a broadening of the sales tax is the timing and and I hear two arguments about this either the timing is very very good because you have a crisis and if you have a crisis it's a good time to make a structural change uh, because there's impetus or it's very very bad because we're counting trying to count every dollar and you're just we're not exactly we can't predict exactly what massive tax overhaul will be so it's I hear both of those things Corey you're, you're not are you are you in on this massive tax reform well it just depends on what it is I mean I think you're well, you know you're, what they're talking about they're talking about getting rid of personal income tax corporate income tax the, the sales tax and replacing it with a very broad based consumption tax of up to eight percent I think um, from my perspective and I've not seen what those numbers look like I think that to me seems like it would be a big win for high income people and a, and a loss for middle and low income people and I hope I'm wrong about that and I'm not convinced that I'm right about it but if that's the case that's a hard sell to mm -hmm. me uh, Senator Gaunt no I don't think that's the, that will be the case at all uh, there's there's all kinds of ways to fix this and not hurt anybody I think we can do it uh, we can do it by implementing an earned income tax credit uh, we can uh, look at the uh, exemptions that exist now Mo a lot of these uh, new the, the exemptions that we would do away with are business to business and and I know yes they'll be passed on but most of them are business to business and we got to make sure there's not a pyramiding problem but we can do this this will be structural it can fix the budget this year it can fix it next year and put us on a path to prosperity I believe one of the problems you have with it is even though this would be a Republican plan and the Senate Republicans are, are, are all on this massive tax reform is I'm not sure how much how much support there is for it frankly in the house I think that house Republicans are leery of this idea now it's still early in this process I think house Republicans want to cut the budget and go from there and not do this massive lift on tax reform I think I can't speak for them but I think that's where they're leaning yeah I can't speak for him either and I would say you're probably right as it as it applies to the leadership in the house but I've talked to lots of house members who are open to this idea mm -hmm. let's get back to where there might be some common ground let's take the tax thing away for a moment just talk about the budget because I'm not sure and Corey I'll start with you I, even among Democrats I'm not sure how much sentiment there is just for the governor's plan to raise taxes 450 million dollars or maybe you uh, including a B&O tax and increasing the consumer sales tax and uh, are you in with that or would you rather see something that says okay we're gonna have a raise a little revenue and also we got to find some real cuts because there's not many no cuts in there to speak I, I think the the cuts are going to be very difficult I think that the cutting we've done over the last several years um, has made cuts this year even more difficult than it's been in the past um, but I do think if we can find more cuts we should absolutely absolutely do that the governor's plan, I mean, I do agree with him to the extent that we do need to raise some revenue to, to fix this problem. I don't like the the B and O tax. No, um, nobody does, by the I, way. I, I don't <laughs> I don't hear anyone that does. I mean, I do like his road plan, although I don't love increasing the gas tax. I mean, I do think that increasing tolls, leaving it the same for you know, for easy pass and increasing the license fee. I mean, we need to do something to fix our roads. I'm more comfortable with that part of his plan than I am the the budget plan. where would you where would you get the revenue the consumer sales tax I think you may do that I mean you have to consider the tobacco tax again the alcohol taxes I mean telephone okay, okay. tax he's, he's, I mean none of it's easy no two things one is the um, the the uh, liquor tax the, the wholesale liquor tax and the beer tax is in there I mean he has a proposal in there not a lot of money in there six no. seven eight million dollars there's so there's not. not real money now you could uh, come back to Governor Tomlin's proposal for the telecommunications tax tax everybody's phone bill say the sales tax re remove the exemption and tax at six percent raise 60 million bucks you know you could do you could do that Ed what about you are you ready to compromise on this thing or do you want all cuts I think oh no not you know I'm I'm not naive enough to think we can do this all cuts but I, what I will you raise a good point we've rate we've we, the budget cuts that have been made over the last few years have been basically across the board cuts sometimes they've exempted K through 12 education but basically across the board and what I would say to you is they've they've those cuts have really added to the problem I think we need to go in surgically we anybody who thinks there's not waste and duplication and and 
and ineffectiveness in state government is dreaming. We know it's there. The problem is how do you find it? It will take a chief executive and his secretaries and their deputies to figure this out. But I will say this, Hoppy. We do need to have a discussion about what's the basic uh, role of state government. What is our role? And we need to have that discussion. I, I agree. And I, I think that, and I don't know about the whole, uh, frankly, Senator, with all due respect, I don't know how, about the whole waste, fraud, and abuse argument, unless, unless you break that down to say, what do we have to do and what would we like to do? And if you start with just what do we have to do and pay for that, and you go to what we like to do, and you say, okay, courtesy patrol, all right, well, we can save five million bucks. Uh, there's a bill we're going to talk about here in a few minutes about eliminating the uh, Department of Education and the Arts. Well, there's about $5 million. You put their responsibility someplace else. Uh, so you, you, you can $5 million that thing up a ways and then maybe raise some fees and come up with a couple hundred million dollars, Corey. I think you can. Yeah. Well, I think you may be able to do that. And I, and I think uh, to, to Ed's point, I mean, a lot of the people who've come before the Finance Committee from the administration have said, you know, we're looking at this, we're just getting here, we think we can find savings. I mean, it's going to be hard to do right now, but we think over time there are efficiencies that we can implement to save money. So I, I think he's right that they are better positioned to find those than but we the, are. But they didn't. Well, they, they, they but, didn't. $27 million in cuts. So but, they, they really have it. <laughs> well, no. Yeah, Corey, what? But, but I believe I believe what they say is that you know we're just getting here. It's going to take us time to find those and okay. implement them. But we think we think we can do it with time. Yeah. Well, we need to we need to speed up that time schedule. Uh, that need if I were in his shoes, I would make that the major charge of my appointments, and that is go in here and find. If the once the people of West Virginia believe. That state government is has ferreted out all of this, what you called waste and abuse and duplication. If we believe that, then yeah, I think we'll get to a middle ground and decide what we need to fund and figure out a way to do well, it. Well, here's what happened. I think that that I think that his staff was charged with coming up with substantial cuts because Nick Casey said on this program, Chief of Staff, we're looking at 400 to 600 million dollars in cuts. But when the decision com time came, and the decision rests with the governor. The governor, as the chief executive, made the decision, I don't want to do that. I want to do something else. So you know there are, somewhere there's a sheet of what you could cut. It's just a question of whether the governor, the, the lawmakers, have the political will or the desire to make those kind of cuts. You're right, Hoppy. It's a matter of will, and, uh, and we have to find that somewhere. Well, I look, I look to you two like a man with a lantern, <laughs> as... Uh, Osho Crago used to say, looking for guys to strike a balance and find a way forward. Will you do that for us? Hoppy, we'll try. But, I mean, as you know, over the last couple of years when we've been wrestling with this budget, I mean, coming to a consensus on what to cut is very, very difficult. And that's why it really hadn't occurred over the last couple of years. It's been across the board cuts. It's been no, nothing targeted, nothing specific. And, it's, and, and there's a reason for that. I mean, every program that's in place with the government has a constituency that counts on it. I mean, you know that. And as soon as you, I don't even like a lot of the cuts the governor proposed, quite honestly. <laughs> yeah. You know, and that was that was the drop in the bucket. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm optimistic. I honestly think you're right. Sometimes it takes a, a, a tragedy or a difficult time for us to really come to grips with a problem. I think we're on the verge of doing that. Senator Ed Gaunch, Republican of Kanawha County. Senator Corey Palumbo, Democrat of Kanawha County. Thank you both.